On 7th September 2019, a national cycling protest will take place in London. Please come. It will call for £6.2 billion per year to be invested in non-motorised transport. This is the UN recommendation, and the investment would be extremely good value for money. In Britain, the non-motorised transport option with the most potential is cycling infrastructure. Its benefit-cost ratio is way above that of other transport projects. The facts speak for themselves. In Copenhagen, it was found that investing £33 per head per year in cycling adds 1% a year to the proportion of all trips done by bike. In London, Transport for London reckons that an investment of £19 per head per year in cycle infrastructure will add half a percent per year to the cycling mode share. So the rate of return is similar in Copenhagen and London, and it compares well with the value for money from investing in rail networks. Crossrail, for example, is costing London £170 per head per year for 12 years and will carry 200 million passengers per year when it opens. Spending at this rate in a cycleway network is predicted to raise the cycling mode share from 2% to 41% in eight years. This would add capacity for 3.8 billion trips per year, compared with the 200 million trips per year that Crossrail is expected to carry. That's 20 times as many trips for two-thirds of the money, with completion in two-thirds of the time. And that's an outstanding return on investment. As well as the transport benefits, investing in cycling would also give us a healthier population, safer streets for kids, cleaner air, less emission of greenhouse gases, and a significant contribution to avoiding species extinction, because we'd have greener cities and fewer concrete jungles. We'd still need Crossrail, of course, for long trips. But half the trips done in London are less than five miles. Building railways for short trips is not good value for money, though they are needed for those who can't or won't go by bike. The UN recommended investment rate of 20% for non-motorised transport works out at £112 per head per year for the UK. This is six times the current London rate of £19 per head per year and 60 times the average UK rate, which has fallen to 72 pence per year. But it's well below the crossrail rate of £170 per head per year. And £112 is not a lot of money. Other things you can buy with it include one cup of coffee a week for a year, or a Zone 1 and 2 travel card for three weeks, or four tickets for Premier League matches, if you can get them for 30 quid. My examples are from London, because I live here, and a bike's been my main way of getting about for 45 years. I've found that bicycle transport is really cheap, really enjoyable and environment friendly. So, how should the 6.2 billion per year be spent? Cycling infrastructure is multi-purpose and in terms of objectives, the suggestion is to invest 70% in strategic cycling, 20% in local cycling and 10% in leisure cycling. The reason is that what Britain most lacks is safe and direct cycleways for non-leisure trips. The cycle superhighways built by TfL 
in central London are good and compare with cycleways in Denmark and Holland. So we need a lot more of them. And they must be networked to maximize their value. Cycle networks have three distinct roles. First, for door-to-door -door commuting. Trips of up to five miles are faster by bike than by train, bus, car or walking. Second, for local trips to schools, stations, shops and other facilities. Livable neighbourhoods need cycleways, traffic filtering, traffic calming and traffic reduction. Third, cycleways are great for leisure trips through quiet and beautiful places, including parks and greenways. Some of these routes will also attract commuters, as Sustrans National Cycle Network does. The leisure parts of the network could certainly do with more investment, but it's less urgent because its standard is already higher. The main problem in the UK is that our urban cycleway networks are little more than signs on posts and paint on roads. This is not cycle infrastructure and it does not help to raise the mode share of non-motorised transport, to improve road safety for pedestrians and cyclists, or to prevent the diseases caused by air pollution and by obesity. So, please come to the National Cycling Protest on 7th September in Parliament Square, London. And please tell your friends and family about it in cycling groups and your workplace. Now, just in case you haven't experienced it, here are some video clips of life on the London Cycle Network. It's a route network, not an infrastructure network. Something must be done.